Hi and welcome to part two of circular functions, unit circle, uh, trig, graphs, all that sort of stuff. Um, the, the next one, uh, the next video I'm going to look at is uh, quadrants in the unit circle. Uh, so each quarter of the, the circle we call quadrants. Um, this, as you can see here, this is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. Um, and uh, in the first quadrant, both x values and y values are positive because this is just a circle plonked on top of a graph. So therefore, we can say that sine, cos, and tan will all be positive because you know sine is x, the sine is y, cos is x, and then tan will be sine divided by cos. Now, I'm not going into a lot of detail on this. I, I, I can prove it to you um, if you'd like, but I'm just kind of uh, skimming over the surfaces of this because I assume that you've already seen this before. So we can say that in the second quadrant, y is positive, but x is negative. Um, so therefore we can say that sine is positive, but cos and tan will be negative. Third quadrant, sine and cos are negative, but tan will be positive. That's because we get a negative divided by a negative, so that makes tan positive. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, cos is positive, but sine and tan are both negative. So in summary, I guess if you didn't understand all the rest of it, here's what you need to know, is that um, in this quadrant here, all of them are positive. In this quadrant here, only sine is positive, only tan is positive, only cos is positive. And we can remember that by using the CAST uh, you know, uh, acronym or, or you know, all stations to Croydon or whatever else you want to do. Okay. Now, one other thing that you need to know for Year 12, which I think you've seen this before, but um, you, you do, you, know, you do need to know this for um, for Year 12 methods. If I've got this uh, little triangle here, I've got cos theta um, there, sine theta there, and one. I also know that this, um, I, as well as using um, trigonometry, I can use um, Pythagoras theorem to find out, um, you know, the, the length of this. And I can tell you that you know, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, a squared plus b squared, will equal c squared, and, and that just being 1. So therefore, I can actually say that sine squared theta is actually equal to 1 minus cos squared theta, and, you know, vice versa as well. Okay. Um, the next thing that we need to, to know is about the symmetry of the unit circle. Um, each of the angles of the unit circle just gives us a position of x and y values, and after we apply sine, cos, or tan, um, to this angle, we see lots of uh, repetitive results. Um, again, you've seen this kind of thing before. Um, for example, if we take 60 and 120, if I look at this, you know, cos of 60, if I um, do this on my calculator or using my special triangles, which I can show you later on, I know that cos of 60 is a half. That means the x value there is a half. And cos of 120 is actually going to be negative a half. So we, we can actually say that the um, the angle gives us the same distance um, from the origin um, from you know in the x direction um, though one of them is positive the 60 degree one is positive and the one of them is negative um, as the x values are positive between 0 and 90 and negative between 90 and 180. This idea of symmetry um, can be applied to all the angles and quadrants allowing us to come up with these kind of rules. You don't need to learn all these rules or know all these rules you just need to understand the theory behind them. Um, some people choose to memorize the, the laws, um, these rules, others just seem to know. So um, a sine of pi minus um, theta is sine theta. Cos of pi minus theta is negative cos theta. Now if I just draw that quickly just to show you. Um, pi minus theta, which is there, that will give me the exact same answer as cos of theta, which is there. So the same x value, one of them is positive and one of them is negative. Okay, so we'd say that you know, cos of 150 will be the same as cos of 30, except it's a negative. Um, tan of 150 will be the same as tan of 30, but tan, um, that, except it's a negative. Okay, and you can see that for all, all the quadrants as well. Okay, all this means is that when you uh, apply a sine to an angle smaller than 180, you end up with a y value. And this y value is the same as the y value of that similar bit in the first quadrant. Okay, so sine of pi minus pi on three, or you know, sine of two pi on three, okay, which is exactly the same as that, is the same as sine of pi on three. Okay, so this bit will be the same there. It's just whether this is either positive or negative. I hope that made a little bit of sense. Um, this next little bit, I don't know whether you've seen um, before. Um, this is using complementary angles. 
So complementary angles that are, you know, are two angles that add up to 90 degrees. So for example, pi and 3 plus pi and 6, which will give us pi and 2, or you know, um, if you'd like to put it this way, 60 plus 30 equals 90. Okay. If we take an angle from 90 degrees rather than 180 and 360, we, we can still use symmetry, symmetry, although slightly different. Now, most commonly in year 10 and year 11, you've been taking um, angles from here or from here. So if, you, if I asked you to do sine of 150, you would say, well, that's just sine, that's, I'll find 180 and I'll minus 30 from it. Okay. Now what I'm going to get us to do, well, this is one thing you can do in year 12, is instead of doing 180 minus 30 to get to 150, I can actually say that's 90 plus 60. Okay, and I, I will get you know, the similar sort of answer. So, sine of pi and 2 plus theta, um, this just means that the y value at that angle, so, you know, sine meaning y, so the y value at this angle, if we draw the same triangle in the first quadrant, it looks a little bit different. I mean, it's the same triangle, but as you can see, that's now an x value rather than, in previously, it was a y value. So now, we can actually say that sine of pi and 2 plus theta is actually equal to the same as cos theta because cos is the x value. So it's like the y value and the x value have kind of swapped a little bit. Okay? And similarly, we can say cos of pi and 2 plus theta, you know, plus this extra little bit, will be exactly the same You know, because the x value up here is the same as the y value in the first quadrant, except the only difference is that you know, cos is negative in this quadrant. I hope this is making sense. So in short, um, if we take the angle from the horizontal, you know, which is what you've been doing in year 10 and year 11, sine stays as sine. But if we take the angle from the vertical, 90 or 270, then sine changes to cos and cos changes to sine. So just to give you an example of that, I might even open up a new uh, document just to give you an idea of what I'm trying to say. So if imagine if we're asked to find out the sine of 120 degrees. Okay, I know that if I draw that on my unit circle, 120 is about there. Uh, probably not even there. It's probably more like there. So that's 120 there. And sine is the thing I'm looking for. So I'm really after this distance here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that um, in a slightly different way. I'm actually going to you know, draw it again. Okay, that triangle I'm going to draw there, I'm going to draw that over here, okay, and the red bit is the bit that I actually want, and that's actually an x value, okay, whereas before over here it was a y value, so my y values have now become x values, or it's the, it's the same distance anyway. So I, I can actually say that sine of 120 is the same as sine of 90 plus 30, and I can also say that this, you know, if this is 30 in here, that's 30 in there. So I can say that this here, to work out that value, that's actually cos of 30. Ooh. There we go. Um, that one's actually cos of 30. So um, what I can actually say is that that distance is the same as this distance. So therefore, sine of 90 plus 30 is exactly the same as cos 30. Okay, so my sine actually changes to my cos. Um, or, you know, doing it the old fashioned way, I could say that sine of 180 minus 60 um, is, is another way to get this answer. So actually going from here, going back this way. In this case, it doesn't change. That's still sine of 60. So I can say that sine of 60 is actually equal to cos of 30. Okay? This gets very complicated, but essentially this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to convert um, you know, sine values to, to cos values, or, or at least um, identify them as cos values as well. Uh, now, 10 is a little bit different than um, sine and cos. Um, 10 is, is not just a, st a straight swap, but in the next video I might deal with that. So, thanks for watching.